Welcome back to YCS Sydney 2019. We are here with day two um, after our seven rounds of Swiss yesterday. Um, I'm again with the handsome man, Yoe Zeng, to my left or right, depending which way you look at the screen. Huh? Um, how are you feeling this morning? I'm Excited? feeling good. Hopefully the players also just feel as good and they're not nervous or anything and hopefully they play their best and don't lose because they didn't have enough sleep or something. I think that's a lot of preparation that they should have. Yep. And just to have a clear mind and be able to play without making any drastic misplays that they'll go back and be like, yeah, I wish maybe I had a few more minutes of sleep or something like that. Yeah, of course. Like you always want to make sure you're fully mentally prepared and physically prepared because yeah. like these are long days. Mm. Like it's basically like a seven, eight round, a seven, eight rounds event. It takes yeah. a few hours. Like yeah, well over. Takes a toll. Like, yeah. Um. Yeah. Just looking at after day one, we have just over sixty four players making uh the record of X one one or above, so sixteen points or higher. And we actually have a lot of decks. Hopefully, we can get a uh, infographics up. Uh, if not, we'll grab it for you shortly. Uh, we do have a lot of Alt Geist players on the top table. We have a lot of Sky Strike and a lot of Thunder Dragons. I think that's what a lot of people expected. Yeah. But then we did have a lot of uh, other decks up there as well. What did we have? Yeah, but something very notable before that, the Striker decks take up a lot of the X11 bracket with a lot of draws. It's like obviously a deck like Striker, it's like with the new time rule, it changes how they play. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a deck which has a lot of plays every turn, so they have to take it. Uh, they have to take their turn with within a reasonable amount of time or they will lose to the clock like we said yesterday how a lot of matches went close to time so they didn't need to figure out the game plan as time was approaching they needed to make sure they wouldn't lose to being behind and all that yeah also and the deck doesn't really do much damage each turn so really they're yeah. trying to do a lot of plays doing a little bit of damage and then just trying to like out resource their opponent yeah. um the other notable thing there's a lot of thunder dragon up there but there's also a lot of different variants of thunder dragon we're not just seeing the standard list of like just double clauses titan or anything like that like there's actually a lot of different yeah. ones as we saw on stream yesterday we saw the the Ryan Levine and Bowden Temnik both playing the Danger version. Uh, yeah, we Thunder saw Dragon. Uh, Shane playing the uh, Dinosaur version, yep. which I thought was really cool. Yeah, and Jake, Shane Hage taking yeah. down Bowden, actually, in that kind of a mirror match with different uh, variants. And obviously, there is a, quite a lot of normal Thunder Dragon as yeah, well. Yeah, we saw Ken playing normal Thunder Dragons. We have a lot of streamlined Thunder Dragons that just play pure Thunder Dragon and nothing really special. They just want to do the Colossus plays and just go from there. Of course. And then to some different decks. Oh. Um, we have, we have uh, uh, some Burning Abyss. We have some Trixo. We have some Prank Kids. We have everything really we'll we'll get that for you within a round or two mm. um mm. yep so and then we've got our round uh round eight feature match actually about to begin we have uh new south wales finest koji yajima playing burning abyss and we have him playing against uh melbourne's finest liam de bono <laughs> playing sky striker yes a sky striker list here um <laughs> let's have a quick look at liam's list so he's got only three ash blossom as his hand traps and obviously three copies of ray um, he plays a Solemn Brigade, uh, so two copies of Solemn Strike and one Solemn Warning. Uh, also man next to three Heavy Storm Dusters, so that may have been a meta call on his uh, behalf. To think that he's going to invest a lot of Sky Striker and maybe Altergeist. Yeah, I think he's identified that's what a lot of people in Australia like to play, and then he's going to play those, and then hopefully he gets to avoid some of the combo heavy matchups and some of the Thunder Dragon matchups. Uh, also main decking uh, the three Twin Twisters as well, and two Shared Rides. So yeah, like you said, he is very confident uh, that the matchups would be in his favour if he played these cards. Over here, we have Koji. He's playing 40 cards. He's uh, playing the dangers. He's got Jackalope and Suchinoko as level 3s to be able to make uh, Dante a lot easier. He's playing Mermare. He's playing uh, Dark Arm Dragon, which is really cool. He's playing Mathematician. He's playing three copies of Orbital Hy Hydralander. And um, no trap cards because he's playing Sekus Light. So even though Liam is on the play here, do you think that... Because uh, we didn't see a dice roll. Um, did... Would Koji like to go first or second? I uh, I do or... believe Koji would like to go first. He, I do not see any kaijus in his main deck, so uh, he doesn't want to be able to just kaiju them and do a play like Trisbana, which is really popular to clear out all the Sky Strike trap cards. And at this point of the event, um, if Liam did know what he was playing, do you think that the reason he didn't put a monster in the field, even if he could, uh, was just to avoid those kaijus? Or yeah. yeah, I think he's trying to play around that. I think at the top tables, everyone knows what everyone else is playing because they would like to scout the competition. So uh. That does add an uh, extra level to uh, your gameplay. So we see a uh, Danger Tatsunoku coming down uh, for Koji. Uh, we'll see the random method. Uh, so he discards an Alex, so he'll be able to summon that uh, Danger and draw a card. Yep. As we see a lot uh, with the new Danger support. Uh, before that, we saw an Ash Blossom come down on Sekka's Light, which is a really important card in the BA deck. Yeah, it allows you to draw two whole cards and get, your, get rid of a monster you might not want. 
Another interesting card I just saw Cody draw there is Mathematician. Yeah. Uh, what other cards would he send off Mathematician apart from the standard BA? Uh, I think his oh. Fairy Tale Snow was in there. Was a good option. Distrudo, you might want to dis- uh, I think, send. I think it's level four or lower Mathematician. Was oh, it? Oh yeah. Sorry, that one. Um, he could probably get rid of. He could probably send a Farfa to get rid of a card. He can s- discard Alec to uh get rid of a back row. So no, right now l- that, that Libic. Yeah. Right now that the um. Ash has been used. Would he send the, the Scarlet to make sure he gets a Torgar for next turn, or will he be sending Snow to set up, knowing that he's versing Sky Striker, uh, that Snow may not be the best option? He has a lot of options. He could also send Libic to be able to summon one from the hand. He might be able to send Graf to be able to get it to the graveyard as soon as he can. I think he's going for the Calcab by the looks of it, which will return one of the set spell and traps back to the hand. Yeah. So he's going to trigger that effect. Going for the... And Liam's going to evaluate whether or not he needs that on... His field or in the hand? Very sneakily and swiftly puts it back to his hand as yeah. he accepts that going think, back. Uh, Koji's hand has a Distrudo in it and two other cards. So he's obviously got two level threes on the field, so he had now has the option to access his extra deck. Uh, so would Dante be the right option, or is there other uh, rank threes or maybe even a link play uh, that he might go for here? There are. I think Dante Dante's good. I don't see him see him making Underclock Taker right now. I don't see him making Reaper Docus either. I, I do, or he could make Nightmare Phoenix, that's also an option where he can get rid of the other set card on Liam's field. Might be a solemn card like we mentioned that he played. Well, Maybe he's, he's he going hit. for the link, by the looks of it too. So. Wow. He is trying to clear it off. So good call there by Mr. Yahweh. Discarding that, no. oh, Danger Nessie, very good discard. There. And the shared rod will be changed, which means if he wants to activate that Nessie, he's going to have to let Liam draw a card. Ooh. You think it's worth the trade? I, I, I do believe that. Make uh searching a card that you do want is better than your opponent drawing a random card because, la, Liam could be drawing into one of those heavy storm dusters or twin twisters which aren't doing anything. That's very true. Uh, now does uh Koji play? Oh, before I mention that, Orbital Hydralander now gets down onto the field with five different monsters with different names into the graveyard, and he's got the Jackalope as well. I think I think his game plan from the start was just to clear off all the spells and traps one by one, and then try to push for a lot of damage. So the Jackalope unfortunately hits itself, but it will still allow him to summon a monster from the deck, as it's one of the, the better danger cards. I believe Jackalope summoned in defense position, correct? correct? So he won't be able to use it to push for damage. So another potential link play then, perhaps. Yes, he could. He could just now uh, summon Nightmare uh, Unicorn and return that multi-roll and then put Liam to playing off the top of his deck. And he also has Destrudo in hand yeah. still now, so he could also be summoning this, which is what's happening now. So he'll pay half of his life points to summon that Destrudo from the hand. He could be summoning Meme and... Oh, you could summon Yazi, summon Meh Meh, make Link plays. I think this is probably enough damage to uh, win the game. Might be his whole strategy. What yeah. he's been doing all weekend. Yeah. Why he finds himself at uh, X01, I believe. Yeah, they're both undefeated just with one loss. They're coming 6th and 7th and 6th uh, and 5th. I think may, they may be worth a draw. Yeah. Uh, they're coming 5th uh, and 6th on Swiss, respectively. I think they've both built their decks to beat the Sky Striker matchup, which is the most represented deck at the YCS, and which is probably why they've seen the most success with each other. So he's actually going for a Link 4 play here, which could possibly be a Boral Sword Dragon? Could be a Boral Sword Dragon. I think Boral Sword is also just enough damage to uh, attack for a game. Uh, what's the attack of Orbital Hydrolator? Is it 28 or 3,000? I think it's 3,000. So well, that's, um, yeah, Liam will identifies that and packs up really fast. So a quick five-minute game one. To Koji? I think it was also uh, very good on Koji that he does not reveal he plays a Yazi and the Meme yet. He, him having 40 cards, he might be t- uh, telegraphing to his opponent that he doesn't have space to put those cards. I think that's a really good strategy as well. You don't reveal what more than what you need to, whereas Oral Sword is something that you're probably going to play. It's, everyone's going to expect you to play anyway. Of course. And I quickly go into the side deck now that we're already into game two. Um, I quickly just saw Liam uh, put three copies of, there can only be one into his deck really fast. And he's quickly taking out those heavy storm dusts as yeah. we mentioned earlier, as uh, Burning Abyss generally don't play any spell and traps. And just as fast, I'm pretty sure Koji would be playing one of each kaiju in his uh, side deck. He's got one Gamasia, one Kumongus, one Gardala, and one Thunder King there. They oh, think they're oh. all going in. So obviously seeing how quickly they put those cards in, they obviously are very comfortable with this yeah. matchup. They know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, they've practiced it well. Koji's probably done it several times yesterday. They prob- uh, I don't think Liam has done it much, but I would assume he would have learned this from testing. Um, would it be worth Koji taking out? He's obviously with Sekka's Light, you have to... Um, probably play no other spell and traps as you won't be able to activate them anyway. Would it be worth him taking out the Sekka's Light to play the Twin Twisters or do you think Sekka's Light has more value? I think he he think he think I think he will evaluate and um he might just put it in. He might be able to expect that there can only be one coming or some other trap card that would stop them from playing. It could be like summon limit, uh uh the one that stops them from activating from M Mind Drain. It could be all these cards that are played. It could be sh- 
in Shadow Imprisoning Mirror or something. Of course. And um, uh, Liam also has one copy of Ghost Bell in the side, which is interesting. Uh, but he's obviously with his side plan, it looks like he's combining with other hand traps, but not for this matchup. Uh, he also has Evenly Match, which probably won't come in going first. Uh, and Infinite Impermanence is another option, maybe. Uh, I think going first, he may not want to set it, but it may be a way to stop a Boral Sword play from happening. Like, yeah, exactly. Um, um, yeah. OG yeah. might want to put in his card destruction, but I don't see it having value going second. It, uh, well, he's actually, as we talk, Liam's talking about those impermanences now. He just he really uh, put them down. He's going to put them in. He might be able to uh, be able to impermanence a Sekka's Light if uh, OG doesn't choose his uh, card zones correctly. That, that would be a juicy play indeed. So players just deciding now, making sure, since obviously the game one was uh, quite uh, quick, yep. uh, they will be able to decide, take their time, make sure they decide on the right side of their cards. This time uh, won't really be an issue unless this game goes for a while. Yep. Very skillfully played by Koji. I think uh, New South Wales does have the home ground advantage here. But the other option, other interesting thing is he's sitting in the left hand side seat. Yeah, as I we and yesterday we saw a lot of victories come from the right hand side, but uh, by the end of the day, the left hand side started taking some victories back. Yeah. And then of course we finished off with a uh, stalemate. Yes, of course. So this might be the the turning of the tide, as you mm. might say. So here we are shuffling up for game two, first round of day two. Will looks very enthused. Do you think the match would have gone differently if Koji went first and Liam had adopt uh had chosen to go second? Very differently. Um, I'm not sure what first turn board that Koji would be able to set up. I'm not actually sure Liam's hand was um amazing to be able to deal with um what yeah. Koji could have set up, but like with Dante not even being summoned then it was very interesting from a burning abyss strategy. Yeah, very. So we see Liam starting off his turn, so he has decided to go first, uh terraforming for the field spell, uh area zero. Yeah. One card that he didn't have access to last game, so it might have cut off the cards that he could have gotten, like Widow Anchors, Shark Cannons cards, which are very valuable in this matchup. Uh, now, would Liam uh, be trying to adopt the same strategy as last uh, turn, where oh, he didn't leave a monster on the field? Uh, possibly. I think he's identified the Kaiju play. Is that Was that a shared ride I saw? It's interesting. I believe it key. is. He may, it, the one issue I'm finding is that since he has so many cards in his main deck that probably aren't very good against Burning Abyss and not amazing amounts of cards in the side deck to come in, maybe he had to keep some cards that were less good but still playable. Yeah. Because he had to take out three copies of Heavy Storm Duster, of course, and three copies of Twin Twister because both of those cards probably aren't killing as much. Yeah. Off the Area Zero, we saw a multi-roll. We saw that there can only be one. So he is sending that shared ride. And now he's using the multi-roll effect to send the area zero to the graveyard and then triggering effect to summon Ray from the deck. And over in, yeah, over in uh, Koji Sen, I do see Distrudo. I see a Gardala, the Mystery Dust Kaiju. Ooh, so the Kaiju is coming down. I do not see any spells, though. And unfortunately for Liam, he's used both his multi-roll and his area zero now, so he's going to struggle to find ways to clear his own monster if he doesn't want this Kaiju to cause some damage. Mm. But, uh... I think he's learned this matchup well enough. He might just not leave a monster on... Uh, he, I don't know right. how he gets one off the field anymore. Ooh. Now, this does open him up to the Trisbane Kaiju play, which is very, which is a very popular strategy that Burning Abyss used to uh, defeat St Sky Striker. See what Koji has planned to break this board. He's yeah. a Fiendish Rhino Warrior, a Kumongus, and a Gardala. Jackalope as well, I think I saw there. Yeah, I saw Jack Jackalope. Danger. Distrudo. Draw for turn. Uh, well, what will Koji lead with here? Do you think he'll go for the danger play, or would he summon the Rhino Warrior? Or does he Kaiju first? I believe that because he has two Kaijus, he can comfortably just make a Jackalope play because it will maximize the chance of ha survi his Jackalope surviving. He also, he also has a Cal Cab in hand, so that can be used to uh, return the set spell from multi-roll and be banished from the field. Yeah. Because when they leave the field, they are banished from multi-roll's effect. Problem is, do you want to summon the Phoenix Rhino Warrior first? Because, like... If you oh he's we, going he's going for the, for the kaiju. I wonder if Liam saw that coming or he, if he was just couldn't do anything about it. He just doesn't want to risk losing to Widow Anchor, but he's reducing his chances of his uh, jackalope surviving. But he does have Rhino Warrior and a Burning Abyss, so maybe he will just go for that instead. So he's activating the effect of Calcab in hand, uh, so it will not be able to return a set spell and trap. But at the moment with the kaiju yeah. on the field, uh, Liam will not be able to activate his uh Sky Striker spells and traps any uh, spells anyway. And kaiju. And then, uh, so he does summon the Cal Cave. He summons the Phoenix Rhino Warrior. He's going for Dante, I believe, now. That's the only Link Mon uh, only Xyz Mons he plays besides Beatrice. The first time seeing Dante on stream this weekend. He and he will hit three. There's How a Farfa. Sekka's Light. He kept the Sekka's Light in. I think he's adopting the strategy where uh, he is not going to bring in Twin Twisters until he sees something he can actually Twin Twister. I think it helps that he won game one as well, so it gave him that flexibility to yeah. make that risk. Yeah, so he doesn't have to like risk 
siding in a card and it having no use. He's just going to go for it. Now, yeah. not only that, but Sek is like can return the other Kaiju from his hand into the deck to draw a new card because he doesn't need the second Kaiju. Unless he wants to summon it for more damage, perhaps. Yes, he can do that as well. It keeps his options wide open. Now, the only issue I'm seeing here is, would he act uh, was there a reason for him to activate the Farfa here to clear the Kamongus? Because that would obviously turn back uh, all of Liam's spells, so he'd be able to use them again. Uh, no, but he could try to banish one of the set spell and traps. Hopefully, it's a Widow Anchor, so that when he does clear the Kamongus, that it won't be able to activate. The Farfa only hits monsters. Does it? I believe so. Oh. It's still good. Worth a shot? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so may maybe just won't use Farfa. Maybe we'll draw into it later, and then... Maybe use it afterwards when he has yeah. It, yeah. You might try to uh, pick off these face downs one by one first, and then maybe then go for the play because yeah. uh, he has access to a link play here if he would, if he would like with uh, the Seer and Dante both on the field. And they'll both be able to resolve their effects to loop each other, the loop, grab each other from the deck as well. He's going for the Nightmare Phoenix play that we identified. So he may chain link this. Um, would he discard the Jackalope for value? I think he'd discard the Destruder, right? Why um, would because the Destruder there... can activate in the graveyard? So uh, is there value in leaving it in your hand? I He's believe so, but he has gone for the Jackalope. So very interesting. So he's going to pick off one. Jackalope will be able to trigger it. I think he will summon like Nessie or Suchinoko off it, and then he'll be able to make a unicorn like he did last game and adopt the same strategy as before. Now, does he add the Farfa back to hand instead of Seer here? So then he can make a Nightmare Unicorn targeting the face down, and then in the new chain link, then banish the Kaiju when there's no more face downs on the field. Oh, I'm not. I think he's going for the Seer here. I think he just wants to play it safe. I don't think he wants to make any big risky plays, he, just in case it doesn't go through. Of course. Like we said, he uh, Liam does play the Solemns. So, uh, yeah, he I think he just wants to make sure he, all his plays go through, and if they don't, he still has something for next turn. He summons mm -hmm. a Tsuchinoko off the Jackalope like we said he would. So he now has enough monsters on the field to be able to make a Borosaur Dragon. Liam uh, looking quite concerned there. <laughs> yeah. I think he's just hoping that he survives the turn. I think to be safe, Koji should be making the Nightmare Unicorn, right? To be able to pick apart that last spell trap. Well, is the last one the one set from multi roll so he knows what it is? Uh... Well, did multi roll set one? I um, don't I think so. I he don't know if he set one, but he definitely had a counter on it, so I'm not sure if he actually used it. But if not, then uh, I guess the world is Koji's. He can just. Do we know if it's a Widow Anchor? Oh, it's I pretty much the only card right now that could um keep Liam from yeah. taking a lot of damage. Maybe if not. Shark Cannon. Horner Drones could block, block a hit. Oh, I don't know. Does Horner Drone need to summon attack position? No, defense mode. Oh, wait, summons in defense position only. Yes. Oh. He's still got the Destrudo in hand, as we mentioned before, so he can still summon another monster, and he can summon the Kaiju as well. Yes. This is a lot of damage if he can uh, get to the Boral Sword play, as, uh, the same as last game. I think he's making the Unicorn play. He can discard the Destrudo, which is which in the hand, it's in the graveyard, is the same as being in the hand. And now that he's up a game, he may go for that uh, Gazi play that we mentioned. He's discarding Ooh, the he's, Seer. He's discarding the Seer, though. He really wants that Destrudo in his hand. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, but Dante can just add the Seer back to the hand. Very true. But if you discarded Destrudo, he could have also added another Burning Abyss. Yeah, from so from what I understand, you can use Destrudo's effect yeah, in the graveyard, definitely. right? Definitely. There might be a further plan here where he wants to keep it in hand. Maybe he doesn't want to have his opponent have information. Yeah. yeah, he's going for the Destrudo here. I think he can summon the Yazi if he would like. He can go for a Boral Sword if he would like. Boral Sword does take three monsters, right? Uh, Three effect monsters, same as Boral yep. Dragon. And he has a Kaiju. Maybe if he can, go maybe he just goes for the, maybe he can just summon the Yazi now. So he is he, either Synchro he, or Linking. He is synchro summoning. I think he's going for the Yazi. Yazi will be able to destroy it itself. And the multi roll, I would say, because Boral Sword needs oh. to attack a monster to be able to gain its attack. Yep, he's summoning. He will be able to summon Mare Mare, which can reduce its level up to three times to summon three tokens. Very interesting deck here by Koji, but he's playing it very well. Unfortunately for Liam, he hasn't opened the best either game, and the Kaiju obviously is a very good side card and a good draw. I believe these turn of events were just in Koji's favor today. I think he has spent enough time to weigh his options every round, er, every play, every turn. So going through the motions now, activating Mare Mare's effect, you summon some tokens. Uh, he's uh, because Mare Mare has to trigger its effect individually, and it says up to thrice a turn. Thrice, that's a cool yeah, word. Not many. There's not many cards that actually have that text. Probably the only card. Uh, I think that uh, Coach Captain Bear Man actually has a similar oh. effect where he draws cards, but it might be twice or three times. Um, yeah. From zoo format. <laughs> yeah, that that's the one. Oh yeah, that's the one where you use the performer pal bear hug, and that you searched off a broad ball, right? Something like I that. I think so. Yeah, and you are. Uh, it's the one where you overlay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. The rank eight, I believe it is, because it makes a beast warrior on the field level eight when you normal summon it. Is a reprodocus. Uh, interesting plays here. He's probably just trying to make more link plays to be able to get to that borrow sword. 
I think. He is, is making a, does he make does he play summon sorceress by any chance? Uh no, he does not. He also does have still have the kaiju in his hand to be able to uh there there comes the kaiju. Uh there comes the borrow sword that we were talking about. I'm pretty sure he could have made borrow sword previously, right? I believe so. It was weird that he used Reproduker's effect. Yeah. Just not playing around a Gozo, but maybe just <laughs> wanted to make it a different type. Yep. So he's going to use Boral Sword, so it'll gain 1,200 attack. And obviously the Kamungus will lose 1,200 attack, so now it's 3,000 damage. Yep. Um, Gandala will do 2,700 more. And then if he uses Boral Sword's effect, which he's gesturing now, um, he should be able to switch the Gandala to defense mode and finish off this match. Yep. So... And oh, very swift game there. Well played to Koji. Well played to both players. Unfortunate for Liam uh, that that uh, match probably didn't go the way he thought. Yeah. But both players being uh, six wins and one draw. That's uh, only Liam's first loss. Very, very comfortable position for him to be on to play two rounds. He, I believe he has to win both his rounds now. Yeah, depending on the numbers uh, now, because uh, we just found out actually this morning that there was a lot of uh, late entries. So yeah. our number from 864 has actually increased um, over 880, close to 890. Yeah. We don't have the exact figure, uh, yeah. but it's about that amount. Yeah, we do wish Liam the best of luck. We'll have Koji in here shortly for a post-match interview. See how he feels. I do feel like he's really happy right now. I mean, he had two two games where his deck just did what it did, and uh, yeah. Of course, and that's how he builds his deck, and obviously yeah. they both knew exactly what was yeah. going on, and he's identif- very comfortable. Yeah, very, definitely. He's, he's identified everyone, like the deck of choice is going to be Sky Strike. He's going to play a deck where he can build to be favored against the Sky Striker matchup. Yeah. Of course. Um, and now, looking at it now, Burning Abyss was obviously one of the decks that was uh, the lower uh, representation that we had, but we yeah. can look at a, a deck breakdown now of like all the other decks that yep. are involved. Yep. Um, so Sky Striker obviously was very popular. Uh, so Liam uh, playing the Sky Striker strategy. So here we have it now. So, so these are this is just all the players that are uh, better record than X2. Well, yeah, so anyone with 16 points above, X1, 1 or higher. And uh, it's pretty interesting, well, a lot of decks that there are here. So obviously yesterday we saw the graphic of uh, Sky Striker, Ulti Geist, and Thunder Dragon being the most represented. Uh, yep. At this point now, Thunder Dragon has taken a high, yep. um, a higher than Ulti Geist uh, now in representation, almost the most. Yeah, it's almost at Sky Striker numbers. Um, Ulti Geist is still doing fairly well. What I can't tell you is that there are a lot of Ulti Geist on the top table, so they're all comfortably sitting at X O, X O or X One, whereas Sky Striker are all in the X One One bracket. You have Burning Abyss at 3, you have Pendulum at 3. So uh, with that Alter Guys, out of the 10 Alter Guys players that are in the top 64, 8 of them are in the top 32. In fact, 2 of them are still undefeated. Yeah, so yeah. they're reading out the top. They're actually top of Swiss as well. So Alter Guys are doing very well. Even though there is a lower representation, they're, they're much higher up yep. on the rankings right now. You have one Burning Abyss, which we saw is still X01s, that doing very well. Our Pendulum's up there. With there's One of them is a Zephra variant. But it's oh, not... No, it, Zephra's has actually got its own oh, graphic. Do, oh, so it's actually too. technically four Pendulum decks. Yeah. Um, Got Gem Knight, she's still in there. Dino Mist, something yeah. we don't often see, but uh, we've heard about him. He's he's doing really well. I think he's sitting um, at X1, so six yep. wins and one loss. You got a Slash Draw Danger hanging on at X1. You have, you only have one Rongo deck after all the ones that we had yesterday. It's crazy. Very interesting. Like I think when we work, look further down, there was a lot more Rongo in the X2 bracket. Yes, so that means they're pretty much battling against the bubble. Yeah, they're all they're all they all need a win straight. Oh, you got two Lights One and two Zombie, two decks which function really similarly. And, and the Prank Kids deck we actually featured yesterday. Uh, I think Cameron, the, the man we did feature, is sitting seventh in Swiss right now. He was still undefeated going into this round, or X01 going into this round. So, yeah, um, so um, this is a breakdown for day two, the just the top 64 so far. We're going to bring in Koji now for a post-match interview. So welcome back, guys. We are with Koji, who just won his uh, latest feature match. How are you feeling right now? Uh, good. Yeah, good. yeah, good. Very good. Um, going into uh, you'll be going into round nine with mm-hmm. only one draw and no losses. Mm. So you're sitting pretty comfortably. Unfortunately, you can't just lose them both. You have to win one, and mm-hmm. the other one you'll have to have a draw or a win. Mm-hmm. Do you think you're ready for that? I have no idea. To yeah. be honest, with you. I just. How are you feeling about your deck? Uh, kind of rushed. 
at yeah. the end, but then like uh, those combos. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you did play a forty card variant. Though, yes, so, yes. Uh, what it was his deck forty cards as well. Um, I think so, as far as I know. But um, yeah, just forty cards. Ah, so making it this far, what whatever your match has been, um, for you to be undefeated still. So. Game one was actually a draw against the Prankids. Oh, so um, yeah. and then versus a lot of Thunder Dragons. Which do you think your deck's favored against that? Deck? Yes, yes, absolutely. What deck do you think you have struggles uh, against? Most likely Altergeist. Like we can't really win that um, against the Kirin that they have. Oh. Um, yeah, it's just. <laughs> Unfortunately, what I can tell you is there are a lot of Altergeist <laughs> decks on the top tables. You have a game plan for them? Uh <laughs> Probably, I'll uh, we'll have um, the Red Reboots and the Twin Twisters in the side deck. Um, hopefully that uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose game one. And hopefully in game two and three, use those decks that I have that in my hand, hopefully. But you are prepared enough to be able to take on the matchup, um, take it one game at a time? Let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know the YCS Atlanta coming up? It's a 3v3 YCS? Oh, yes. Yeah. If you could uh, play that event, with two teammates from the anime, mm -hmm. <laughs> who would the teammates be and why? Uh, I, I I don't really know too much about it. I mean, I like Yusei. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You say and, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll use Yusei. Um, hey, Joey? Joey? <laughs> yeah. Joey? Good answers. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we wish you the best of luck in the final two rounds. Hopefully Thank we'll so see much. you in Top Cut. Thank you.